Hey guys, welcome back to Contest Prep University. Joe Klimzeski with Adam Atkinson. We are in episode four of our series on scoring. We're going to talk about what the judges are actually doing. And of course, Adam, in the NPC, which we're kind of using as our, our moniker here, uh, it is all controlled by the head judge. A lot, of, a lot of control and professionalism going into this and making sure that everybody is following the same, same pattern of thought, at least in how the process works. So so let, let's talk about that. There's just the mechanics of what's happening at the judges panel. Yeah, so we're, we're going to kind of have a two-part section here because it's a COVID year. Um, typically, guys, there are seven judges on the panel. Um, the head judge makes the initial call out. The head judge places you on stage how they think that you should place. However, each one of the seven judges gets to score you, let's say there's eight of you on stage, they get to put a number on you one through eight on how they think you place. Collectively, over the course of all seven judges, they add those scores up, the lowest score wins. Now, the cool thing about this is, is to prevent potential politics, they drop a high score and a low score. So they're only going to tally five of your judges' scores. So that tends to, you know, like let's say you pose with a judge and they say she's definitely number one and you have all twos, you lose your vote for number one because that person maybe had some bias towards liking you. So, you know, that's one way they keep it even. However, this is a COVID year. They're trying to be careful and not put judges in a situation where they have to use emergency judges or judges that aren't as seasoned, they're bringing it down to five judges and they drop a high and low score. So a perfect score in a normal year would be a five. Um, a perfect score in COVID year would be a three. And let, let's talk about, are, are there any, is it just a straight up, like like you're voted on, you're, you're judged on one thing, like you get the score of one or two or three from me. Or are they doing them in, in weighted categories like, like, like some of the other organizations do? Yeah, so it really is based on one vote. And I know what you're speaking of, where there used to be like um, conditioning rounds, um, muscularity rounds, and uh, would be presentation. So mm -hmm. you were judged on all three yep. and like the INBF and uh, I think OCB did it that way as well. And then I think DFAC had their own little spin, but I think they have fourth category, if I remember right, but I can't remember what it was. Well, they, they kind of brought back in like, like fullness. They wanted to see, you know, they, they wanted it to, to not be so weighted toward just conditioning. That's right, because if you guys remember, natural bodybuilding really did start becoming conditioning contests for a while. Mm. And I would, you know, and I would say kind of still that way, but, you know, just, just to give fair uh, representation to the different, different uh, contexts that some of our, our clients or listeners here would, would be involved in, you know, that, that is something that as you get scorecards, you could still see in some organizations is that, oh, you scored, you know, this in the symmetry round, this in the muscularity round, here was your presentation. Um, but when you, when judges kind of give feedback, let, let's talk about what they're actually looking for, Adam. So, so you know, if, if I'm sitting on the judging panel and I, I have to say, okay, this person is definitely first, second, third, fourth, and, and I, it is just a one score, um, you know, what are the criteria that I'm, I'm running through? And, and I know we're not going to go through every single division, yeah. but are, are, are there changes where at very specific contests or years, judges meetings are, are being levied toward you know a certain bias like hey guys let's remember to do this or the 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 you know we've been kind of seeing this trend and we don't like it so we need to rein back here like, like what are the kind of instructions that they're being given yeah that that definitely happens um actually in men's physique they recently i think two years ago said people are coming in with two big of delts and they're pushing people like that to go into classic bodybuilding versus men's physique which is funny because a lot of those guys don't train their legs but on an upper body level you know so for a lot of those guys the best thing to do is maybe bring up your chest to make your delts look smaller stop training delts as much so um also 
I've heard of people coming into condition, you know, where they're almost too lean. And uh, I think bikini and men's physique are those two divisions where they don't want too much of something. You don't want to have too much muscle. Um, you don't want too much uh, separation between the muscle tissue. Um, so those are kind of what I like about those divisions because we're really good diet coaches. Um, and I like the challenge of meeting a criteria versus just getting someone as shredded as possible. Yep, absolutely. All right, guys, well, we're going to move on. Our next couple episodes are going to dive into routines and presentation and then even what happens then at finals and, and final tabulation. So a little bit of a long series because we want to make sure that you guys really do see the technical aspects of the judging process. So stay tuned. We will see you next time in Contest Prep University.